Hi, I'm Denise Gagne. I'm the creator of Music Play and Music Play Online, and I'm here today to do an overview of Lesson 29 for April Week 2. On the classic website, the original website, musicplayonline.com, this is where the online learning modules are. And if I want a specific grade, I can jump to it, and there's Lesson 29 for April Week 2. But we're retiring this website at the end of June, and what is now the beta.musicplayonline.com is going to become the main website. There's many features on here that are an improvement. The modules, the lesson modules are here and I can filter by grade. So I'm going to do a quick overview of pre-K, lesson 29, April week two. And in this, we're going to work on vegetable rhythms and do some review, ballet of the unhatched chicks. We're gonna learn the letter R, and uh, we have the supporting resources for the letter R here. Explore fast and slow with the metronome, do some poems with the metronome, and then review some of our fun movement songs. So we start every pre-K class with type four music, clap your hands, and we'll try and mix that up a little bit as well. Echo the vegetable rhythms. Um, this is fun. The kids uh, do what I do. Ready, go. Corn, corn. Carrot, and corn. then we sit. Corn, corn, carrot, corn. Corn, corn, carrot, corn. Corn. And that's to teach them that rhythm in music or rhythm in a poem comes from language. And then we're going to create our own word rhythms with corn and carrots. This is an interactive activity. And you can use this to model for the students. Simply click on a carrot or a corn and it will go into one of those boxes. I do, we do, you do. That's the teaching process. I'm first of all showing the kids how we can do it. And then we do it together. Carrot, carrot, corn. Corn, carrot, corn, carrot, corn. Or I could do that with instruments. Carrot, carrot, corn, corn. Carrot, corn, carrot, corn. And you can take away if you want and redo. So that's the interactive version of it. We also have the word cards. So I don't put these in color if I'm doing it for a class, but I can make my own word rhythm pattern. Carrot, 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 corn. And I make a pattern and then I clap it. So the I do is the interactive to model how to do this. The we do is the interactive because I invite the children to help make choices about whether we use instruments or body percussion or found sounds. The, um, the uh, you do is the cards. So in the printables, you have this page. I would just give one to each child, get them to cut it out so you don't have to spend your hours at the photocopier. It's good fine muscle coordination practice for them to do it. And as I said, We've got them in color, but I wouldn't use color printing for this. So that's the carrot corn in uh, manipulatives. We review the ballet of the unhatched chicks. This video is very fun and engaging for the kids. And I also like to dramatize where I get the kids to pretend that they're a little chick trying to peck their way out of the shell. They rest on the long notes. And at the end, they're out of the shell. Uh, the letter R is the new letter of the week, and we do the Rock and Robin song. This new little symbol will take you to Rock and Robin in the song list. There's a kid's demo, so you can see how I do it. Rock and Robin likes to rock and roll. Up to you how you want to move. You can choose mine. Um, I've linked to the metronome tool. And this is a lovely tool. I can make it full screen, and then I can practice doing slow notes, or I can do fast notes. And then I want the kids to say their poems with them. So chuck, chuck, let's try it. Medium, chuck, 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 chuck. Good morning, Mrs. Hen. And let's try it really fast. One, two, ready, go. Chuck, chuck, 
chick, chick, good morning, Mrs. Hen. Um, we can teach children about fast and slow, but the best way is for them to experience it and doing it through. Let's see, I don't know how to escape out of this. Let's see if I pull this over. Oh, I click out here. Um, exploring with the metronome is a great way. So here's the chip, chip, chip poem, if you don't remember. Here's the shake and eggs poem. That's another good one to do with the metronome. And then as time permits, review the one green jelly bean song, which they love, the jig, 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 jiggles, sleepy bunnies, they dearly love. And uh, if you have time, review the rain, rain story and get that rain, rain song inside their heads. So that is pre-K, lesson 29 for April week two. I'm now going to look at kindergarten, lesson 29, April week two. And you can see we sometimes do the same activities or similar activities and that's okay. Kids can repeat these from year to year. So welcome to music, or sorry, welcome to school. I'm um, doing the body percussion this week. And they would stomp along. Notice it's coming right back to where I left it. We had a bug prior to this that sometimes put it out of place. Slide whistle warm up today. We haven't done this Boys for a long time. This is our slide whistle warm up. It, kids love it. And so they echo it. If you have one in your possession, do it yourself. Don't use my video. Uh, the Kids Are Cool song is lots of fun. They really like it. And we have Miss Denise doing the movements for us. Uh, and she's much better than this is at it. Kids are born automatically cool, cool, cool. Kids are cool. Um, so I think maybe I'll eventually learn this. Um, the vegetable rhythms we did with pre-K, we're going to do with kindergarten as well. And we review the old Mr. Rabbit song. And then we have the interactive, create your own word rhythms with corn and carrots. Carrot, corn. Carrot, corn, 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 corn. I'm going to leave the last one blank. This is kindergartens. We can start talking about rest. Carrot, corn, carrot, corn, 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 corn. And if you're using the manipulatives, what I would suggest you do if the kids want to have a rest, get them to turn the card over. And then that's um, a, a beat with no sound at all. So carrot and corn rhythms for kindergartens. And we have, again, the same printable manipulatives. I, I, I've taught pre-K in many schools with zero technology. So the manipulatives are an absolute essential in that situation. And I don't want kids on the screen all the time. I love having kids do things with stuff they can touch and feel it's really good for them. So we have the Space Worms video next. I love this song. It's so fun. Turn down the lights and the kids get to be Space Worms around the classroom. They love moving to this. They love the interesting sound effects in this song. Um, so I, I really do enjoy that. This is optional because I think I've crammed a little too much into this lesson. So if it's too full, this is something you can leave out. But kids like adding sound effects to poems. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'm going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'll get there very soon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'm going to the moon. So pick out some words to add sound effects to. And of course, this gives you a chance to explore all those fun instruments you have in your classroom, like guiros and vibra slaps and the things you don't use very often. So Five Green Men is a, a counting backwards song. And so there's a manipulative available for this. And I've given the manipulative in color and in black and white. It obviously is gonna print nicer if you use the black and white version. And then if the kids decide to, they could color their, um, their little manipulatives. So it's 
five green men in a silver spaceship flew round the moon one day. They looked all around, didn't like what they found, so one of them flew away. And then there's four left. So what you have the kids do is they put their five spacemen manipulatives out in front of them. And when one of them flies away, they turn it over or they could fly it away behind their back, but that's a little more complicated. And then we know we stop and we count. How many do we have left? We have four. Four green men in a silver spaceship flew round the moon one day. They looked all around didn't like what they found, so one of them flew away. And again, if you want to have them fly away behind their backs, that would be okay too. So this is what the manipulatives look like. I've given them in color and in black and white, and I probably should have chopped up the black and white ones because they do look a little nicer than color copy it, copied in grayscale. And then just to end, review the bubblegum counting game. And this is fun. We sing the bubblegum song first. Bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish. How many bubblegum do you wish? And invite a child to tell you how many there are. Was there seven or two or four? They would say four and they're right. We sing again. Bubblegum, bubblegum. The idea with singing games and little people is that they repeat a simple song over and over and over and over. They get the melodies, the pitches inside their heads. Bubble gum, so, so me. So we're preparing the kids to be able to read those pitches. But first they need the sounds inside their heads. No better way to get a sound inside your head than doing something 20 times. And if you've got 20 kids in the class, they all want to play the game. So that's our kindergarten lesson 29 for April week two. Enjoy. Now I'm going to grade one. Lesson 29, April week two. Here is our overview, our objectives, and our printables are all here. I double checked actually to make sure they were. So we're starting with Poison Melody. And again, this is a chance for kids that maybe don't read So Me and Do really well to get reading practice doing it in the context of a fun game. In Poison Melody, you echo everything poison except melody. the Poison Melody. How to play. Echo every pattern that you hear except for the poison pattern. The poison pattern is... So, do, 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 do. Ready, set, go. Do, 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 me, do, 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 me. Do, 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 me, do, 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 me. So they echo every pattern except... Do, me, so, so. Do, me, so, so. So this is a fun game for the kids to play, and they probably would have got the so do 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 the poison pattern next, and then so in, do 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 if do. they echo it, they get the oops. I've lit. I'm I'm using the scary versions of poison melody just with our older kids. We have a rhythm play along. Um, if you are looking for rhythm play alongs on the website. Go into Rhythm Practice, choose the level you want to do. Now, some of these are new levels. New is ties, and this, this will have only rhythms that use ties. So the Read, Clap, and Play is where you will find these wonderful play-along videos. If I go back to my search, and if I, oh, shoot, I didn't want that. I wanted Rhythm Practice. If I choose a level that we had previously, we had previously, we had 11 levels. Now we have 24. So now you are looking for the read, clap and play for those beautiful play along videos. We're also adding the beautiful play along videos into the listening kits with classical music. It's going to be really quite lovely. So I'm going back here, my rhythm play along for grade ones. You can clap, pat, or instruments, whatever you choose to do. Ready, go. That is 
just fun. I really enjoy it. We have the song Shake It by Susie and Phil. Um, this is a very fun movement song. You can see a little bit of how you do it. So just keep the beat to start. Let's clap the hands and stamp our feet. Let's tap our hips. It's really neat. Let's pat our knees and feel the beat. And I try and keep the hips. Let's shake hips. it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and stop. Let's tap our cheeks. So I try and cue so that they know what movement's coming if they don't remember the words. Then we're going to go into our Earth Day things. April 22nd is Earth Day. So all grade levels, most grade levels, are going to have some Earth Day songs in April. Let's save water. Let's save water. Let's save water. Because water is good to drink. Yes, Water is good to drink. The recording says, put a brick in your toilet because 30 years ago when this song was written, uh, that's how you created a low flush toilet out of your own toilet. You put a brick in the tank. But now get a low flush toilet, a low flush toilet. And the kids will probably be somewhat familiar with that. Brush your teeth with the tap off. Ch -ch 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 -ch. My grade ones have always loved this song and they do understand the importance of saving water. And then they get to sing the whole song, replace the words, put a brick in your toilet with get a low flush toilet. Then we review the five little ducks song. I do love this song. I've done it as many as four weeks in a row because there's so many different things you can do with it. Last week, we did it with manipulatives and took one away each time. This week, I've given the uh, reproducible blank storybook so that the kids can illustrate. If you are in the situation of teaching in person and you're not allowed to sing, this is a lovely way to get a song inside the kids' heads. Listen to the song and now you create an illustration of the song. So the, um, the illustrated little storybook is there. And this one actually has um, got a lot to do. So filling up those 50 minute music classes when you can't sing, this will help you with that. But it's a really good activity for children to respond to what they're hearing in a song. Good reading practice for them because they get to read the words. We review the swan. I absolutely love this. So we review that. I wanted to do it two weeks in a row because it was a lot of work to make that. Figure out three and a half minutes of plate choreography. Um, but we're going on to the pianists. And our feature artist is our very own Matthew, who is a multi-talented concert pianist programmer. And he may have also been in touch with some of you because he's uh, he's been managing our districts. We're going to let him go from the districts and we're going to ha have someone else take over from that so he can do his coding more because he's so good at it. He created the carrot corn activity. That's some of his work. But you get to listen to an actual recording of it. And of course, he's wonderful. So you get to actually see what it looks like when it's played. Um, this is Dana Hero's students. And Dana has done a fabulous job with movement for this. And I would encourage you to try the same movement. Now, keep in mind, when the kids are going to what appears to be our left, they're actually going up the keyboard. In their view, they're going up the keyboard. Now they're going back down the keyboard. And the movement kids are running with the exercise. And then their arms show the five note exercise up and up the keyboard and back down the keyboard. <laughs> I, I really, really love that performance. Um, turning the whole of the Carnival of the Animals into a, a concert is an amazing idea. We have an optional worksheet for you to do, and um, this one here features the piano keyboard and showing the kids the low end of the keyboard, 
the high end of the keyboard and they get to color a couple of piano players. Uh, the loud chord at the end of each exercise is as if to say, done. And that's uh, probably how many piano players feel after they've practiced their scales and arpeggios. Um, this is a good time to go to your ORF instruments and show kids that the ORF instruments are exactly the same. The low is on, I guess it's on this side for you looking at this video, and the high is uh, at the other end. And then optional, if you have time, sew me in the spider storybook. I don't know if um, there will be enough time for you to fit that in. So that's grade one, lesson 29, April week two. Here is grade two, lesson 29, April week two. And we've got some fun with Mozart happening again with the grade twos. So we're going to sing Welcome to Music, play Poison Melody with Do Re Mi, and then we're going to play along with Pantomime by Mozart. And I'm going to show you, you can slow this down if you use this gear wheel tool. So you can go up to speed and change it. But this is not a some sticks. Now drums. Or you can substitute whatever instruments you choose. So the play alongs are beautiful. And then we have a ribbon activity. So scarves work in place of ribbons if you don't have ribbons. And Again, we, sh we try and illustrate the form of the piece. Circle, circle, and circle the other way. Wave back and forth, getting higher. And then I always love to give the kids an opportunity to create their own movement. So you can copy the first time and then create your own. A quick video about Mozart follows. It's two minutes and 21 seconds. That's as much as grade twos need to know about Mozart. And then we have some Earth Day songs. So we read through the words for recycle. We listen to the recycle song and um, then play the video again and sing along. Uh, can the kids create actions for this? And review the garbage song. And again, I've created a little reproducible storybook for those kids in situations where they can't sing. This, again, is a good alternative for what they can be doing. And if you have time, we've given a worksheet for making an Earth Day poem. E is for everyone. And you choose your rhythm instrument. E is for everyone. So create a poem and then create the accompaniment that you want. So that's lesson 29, grade two. This is grade three, lesson 29 for April week two. So I'm following a theme here. We're echoing some body percussion, which we haven't done for a while. And then we're going to play along with a Mozart variation. If these are going too quick, use the gear tool to slow them down. Rest two, ta, ta, two. Rest two, ta, ta, two. Rest two, ta, ta, two. Rest. And now the drops. These do zip along quite quickly, and so um, we have used note values that are appropriate for the speed of the composition. So that's uh, variation one, and now we hear variation two. Ready, go. And it's a little faster. So I wanted the kids to have the opportunity to make their own rhythm composition. So in your supporting resources, I've given you a composition worksheet for your grade twos to create their own 16 beat. 
And then uh, if you want to, you can do it this way. If you want to do it on devices, I link you to the rhythm composition and I would choose level two or level three, wherever you feel your students are at. And you can play it back. Oh, I have to fill in everything before it'll play back for me. Two, ta, 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 t. And I could screenshot that and save it, or I could ask the kids to copy it to a piece of paper. That way they get some notation practice in hand. That's good for them. And then I've given you a recording of the theme that you can play their new compositions with. Uh, Poison Melody with Do, Re, Mi, Sol, La. That is to introduce the Chestnut Tree song, um, which uses actually high Do, but we don't have those videos made yet. So read the lyrics and then read the rhythms. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. It's always important to use the reading skills in actual musical pieces. It's great that they can do the play alongs and it's great that they can read patterns and play poison rhythm. It's even greater that they can look at this piece of music and read it. And then we are going to sing the song under the spreading chestnut tree. This link will take you to the song list. And, and in the song list, I have all sorts of interactives. I have a rhythm sort, I have a tone ladder, I have a soul, sofa challenge. So I can do any of those activities. And I have to go back, I think this way, once I've been in the song list. Maybe I just click out of here. Oh, that did it. Nope. Okay. I'm going to have to find out about that because that's not what I was expecting. Learning modules. Grade three. I promise by next week I'll know how to get out from the song list and back to where I want to be. I don't know yet. <clears throat> so there's the 16 beat rhythm. There's the accompaniment to play. There is Poison Melody under the chestnut tree lyrics to read, rhythm to read, sing the song. And because the song goes at different tempos, um, that's part of the fun. Under the spreading chestnut tree, there I held her on my knee. We were as happy as can be under the spreading chestnut tree. So you do it however you want, but those are the movements that I do and the kids demonstrate. And then we launch the interactive tempo activity, which is great. I would maybe go in this range for your grade three students, but you choose whatever is worth. Now we have a section on Australia. If you only have one lesson, you probably won't get to Australia or you'll have to skip something earlier. Um, but Waltzing Matilda is a great song for grade threes. My grade threes always loved learning this song. We've got lots of language to describe to them. Then we learn to sing the song. And then we actually extend it to learn about the didgeridoo or in the Aboriginal language, Yadaki. And traditionally it was used to accompany ceremonies. It was made out of hollow tree branches. Some players use circular breathing. And this is um, a link to what is a didgeridoo. This is a link to a traditional performance. Pretty cool. So if you have time to do everything, it's wonderful. If not, you're gonna have to pick and choose. Um, so there's lots of material, lots of content in lesson three, uh, sorry, lesson 29, grade three, April week two. This is grade four, lesson 29, April week two, and we're continuing the Earth Day theme with our grade fours. And a little um, lesson on body percussion. This is the Ode to Joy lesson. You can learn it completely by rote from Christian. He does a beautiful job of teaching it by rote. And then what you can do is 
reinforce what Christian has done by reading it. So this is the rhythms that he's used, and this is the body percussion score for it. Chest, clap, thigh, thigh, clap, thigh, thigh, clap, stomp, stomp is the A section of Ode to Joy. The B section is thigh, thigh, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, thigh, thigh, clap, butterfly. Um, for me, I am more reading dependent. My memory isn't as good just learning it by rote. So if you're a teacher like that, having the body percussion score might help you. We review the One Planet song. Here is the kids doing sign language. And I know this is not perfect. Um, you might have a sign language interpreter in your school that can do a better job than, than my students did. Uh, we re read the words to the compost song. This is a new song and it has an ostinato that runs throughout. So it makes it an interesting compositional style to have a song where it uses uh, ostinato throughout. And then we have the kids uh, do the notation video and then a discussion about what can go into a compost. So again, if you're in the situation where kids can't sing in person, this might be a good activity to do with your students. You might want to leave it out if you're teaching um, and you're allowed to sing. We have an introduction to dynamics for grade four and then a worksheet for them to complete on dynamics and then a play along that uses a variety of dynamics. And this is one where it does go a little quick and you might want to use the gear tool to slow it down. <laughs> is okay, but we're going to get 60 notes coming up here. And anytime I've got 60 notes, it's a really good idea to drum it. And I have my little yoga mat here. This is a cut up piece of yoga mat. And it makes a great practice pad for the kids and it dampens the sound. Um, I have a listening log for the concerto. They've played along to it, so they've got it in their head already. But now you can listen it and focus on the questions that are asked. Learn about the composer. Um, George Frederick Handel is a focus in grade four. And so I love doing pieces by him. So that's grade four, April week two, lesson 29. This is grade five, lesson 29, April week two. And again, focus on Earth Day here. Um, also a really interesting compare performances activity. Our reproducibles are here. So we start with poison rhythm using ties because we're gonna do a little lesson on ties and slurs. And then a play along using ties. And these are from our new play along series. Uh, plastic improvisation activity. You read it, P-L-A-S-T-I-C. Actually, I would read the rhythms first. T -t 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 and then read it with the words. And then you make up four things that you could do to help reduce our use of plastics in the world. I could use recycled bags. And you think of four things. You use this as your theme. And these are your variations and you create an activity. Uh, extra challenge, create an ost ostinato with mouse sounds. So an ostinato is a pattern that repeats. So uh, example, that would be fun. The, uh, the Earth Day song for grade fives is Show You Care. It's um, a piggyback song on The Water Is Wide and it's very pretty. So here is where I am reviewing what a tie is. A tie is a curved line joining two or more of the same notes. You hold for the value of all the notes. Here is a slur. A slur is a curved line connecting two different notes. You play these notes without separation. On a recorder, you don't tongue the second note. If you're singing, you smoothly connect the notes. And then if you go to the song notation, we have an example of a tie here, a slur, 
a slur, a slur. Very pretty song. We had schools perform this last year. nice performance piece. If you go to the song list, you can download the piano accompaniment and you can accompany your students on the piano with it. And then we get one of my favorite artists. You can tell I'm a child of the 70s, James Taylor. <laughs> the water is wide. I can cross over. Just love that. If for some reason the safe share doesn't link, just Google James Taylor sings Water is Wide. And then we have an equally beautiful choral performance of the Water is Wide by the Miami. favorite, favorite folk songs, and then an opportunity to compare the performances. So there's a worksheet printable, or you simply discuss it. So performance one, James Taylor, two, Miami Choir, three is show you care, which performance did you like the best, tell why, in three to four sentences using musical terms. So a really, this is a really nice lesson for grade fives. That's lesson 29, grade five, April week two. Our middle school students have actually two options for April week two. Last year, I taught bucket drumming in middle school in this week. So I taught bucket drumming lesson one, two, three, four in sequence. But my suspicion is that a lot of teachers have already done bucket drumming with their middle schools. So I'm doing something new. This is a unit on electronic music, and it is based on a Google Arts presentation. Don't send your kids to the website because when I reviewed the website last night, I found one artist that had very inappropriate language and graphics. So just follow the lessons with, with, with me and I'll make sure that um, you're doing only things that are appropriate. So what I have done is I've made up a short question and answer worksheet. And there is a question for each um, each slide in the presentation to help keep the kids focused. You can have them do this or not. Choice is yours. But I actually find with middle school kids, they are perhaps a little more focused if you give them expectations. So this is now artsandculture.google.com. And this is a whole module on the theremin, which is fabulous. So I've gone through it all and you read this to your students. And then question number one, who is the inventor of the theremin? So it's Lou Terman or Leon Theremin, as he also liked to call himself. And the text is behind me. I can't see it right now, but the question is what instrument did uh, Terman learn to play? He actually studied cello at the conservatory level. And it tells about how in 1919, he uh, was a scientist at the Physical Technical Institute in Petrograd. And so the question three was, what was different about the instrument Terman started developing? He didn't touch anything. It's so cool. Um, how were different pitches made? You move your hands. I'm hoping we can get a video demoing more of the, the theremin. So this is what it sounds like and things automatically play. And I want to get to the end of this because we continue the history of the theremin. This slide is all in German. I translated it and what it talks about is Clara Rockmore. Um, who was a violinist, but uh, she got um, inflammation in her arm, in her bow arm, and she couldn't continue playing. And so she took up the theremin as a replacement instrument. So even though they, I, I think they just have made a mistake here and have that slide still in German. And this is why Clara Rockmore um, learned to play the theremin because she injured her arm, sort of like my bursitis tendonitis I have going. Theremin was also a cellist. This is the first performance at Carnegie Hall. And uh, Theremin continued to work with the Soviets 
and the Soviet Secret Service. And in 1938, they called him home and they're not sure why. Shortly after returning to the USSR, he was uh, put in jail. And we're not sure why of that either. But Theremin, while he was in jail, developed using this technology that built the Theremin, he developed technology and put a listening device in a plaque that was given to the ambassador. And for seven years, they were able to listen to their conversations. Even his allies fighting so together to news. end World War II. I'd be more concerned about the Chinese and, and Vietnam. There's, and there's, um, sir, I need you to end that phone call immediately. Documentaries and uh, sci-fi movies that the theremin was used in for sound effects. I should have left that go. Comedies that it was um, used in for sound effects. And these sound effects are actually really quite funny. I'm not going to show you now. You'll have to watch oh. the video with your kids. Um, it was used by Clara Rockman in performance. This is quite amazing. And that's what um, it, it inspired the Moog synthesizer that came later. His grand, great grandson is now one of the world's best theremin players. The There's an a little episode of Big Bang Theory that uses the theorem, and this is so funny. <laughs> and an episode of The Simpsons. So Google has gotten permission to put this wonderful thing all together, and we're piggybacking on this Google Arts presentation for lessons about electronic instruments. So that's the middle school lesson, lesson 29. April week two. If you want to start bucket drumming, you certainly could do that. But I think your students really and truly are going to enjoy the electronic music module. Um, and I'll be building that out in the coming weeks. I'm Denise Gagne, creator of Music Play and MusicPlayOnline.com. You can join us on Facebook, Music Play Teachers Group. You can join us. Um, we have Music Play on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and our YouTube channel is wonderful. Thank you for joining me in this, uh, in this overview of Lesson 29.